Welcome to another episode of On Top and Hot. It's Tuesday, July 26th, and I'm the host, John Zadar. What we do on this show is we like to focus in on OTC and penny stocks. We're looking for stocks that are catching the attention of the investors or jumping and bumping on the charts or have headlines like this news over here. Now that's news that I've personally looked at over the last three or four days and I'm just sharing it with you. There's a lot of news out there so I can't share it all. But if you haven't seen any, that's pretty good stuff right there. Now that is just OTC news. We do look at penny stocks too. Penny stocks are any stock under $5, and they can be on the NASDAQ, New York Stock Exchange, or the OTC. We look at them all. Now, I do my research on OTC stocks. Actually, I start on all my stocks right here at the otcmarkets.com website because it is updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC. With all that pertinent, important information I'm constantly looking for. So why should I be running over to Google wasting time when it's right here? First time you see it, it's accurate. So don't waste your time over at Google. Just come here. Make your research fast and easy. So let's take a look at how our OTC market fared today. We did a little more dollar volume. We were at, I think, uh, 1.4 yesterday, 33% down. We're up to 1.7. Our share volume fell. We are now under 10 billion again. I think we were at 11.2 yesterday. So that is a huge drop. Our trades went up though, surprisingly enough, which tells me that a lot of cheaper stocks were being sold. We had more trades and uh, less volume. So it seems to me the math is gonna work out to cheaper stocks were actually being sold. Now we're gonna be looking at a variety of stocks today because there was not anything really running. Now I'm gonna show you one that got over 2,000%. I think it actually hit just under 5,000% gains, but there was one particular reason it did it. And it happens over and over again, so that's a good reason to see which one it is. But I've got other ones that have catalysts. Most of the stocks we're looking at had the most trades today. They were in hundreds of trades, 200, 500 trades, which means there was probably hundreds of people trading these stocks. And that's when you're gonna get your runs. All right, let's see what I got. First stock we're taking a look at was a runner today. They did great. They came out with news, which was really big news for the company and even bigger news for the consumer. This is in the health sector. Now you've probably noticed I don't cover a lot of biotechs and biopharmacies, not because I don't think they're hot, they are. No, the truth of the matter is the PRs are just too dry. They're too technical, they're hard to understand, and they're even harder to explain to you. And I don't wanna look duh, stupid. So I normally don't look at them. But hey, would you believe that this PR was pretty simple to read? And it is really big news. So I'm gonna share this one with you. So as I said, their ticker is QBio. They finished the day at 12 cents with over 200% gains. They are on the middle tier of the OTC, the QB, the B stands for better. That means they audit their financials. Their 10Ks and 10Qs have actual factual numbers from a CPA, so they're transparent, they're trustworthy. They also have a verified profile and a transfer agent verified. I'm telling you to look for these green ticks on all the stocks because this is more verified information. Now they seem to be late on a filing. Delinquent Sec reporting is up here, so let's jump on over there since they brought it up. Let's see what we got. All right, we have an NT10Q which was filed, oh goodness, that was 10 days ago. That's a bit interesting. NT means not, at least that's what I see it as. Not, we're not gonna be filing on time. And normally they will tell you the excuse and when they're gonna file. Not always, but one or the other. Here they do say it's anticipated uh, that the quarterly report will be filed within the next several days. Well, geez, it's been 10 days. Now the funny thing is, is that this type of filing, you normally get a five day grace period, which they are beyond. But when a company files that and they say, we're gonna have our earnings out before the end of the five day grace period, the stock jumps. It gets a nice strong surge off of this silly filing just before the earnings come out kind of a cheater way to get your stock to move. All right, let's go on back here. So what is the relative volume around this company today? Well, she normally does 378,000 shares a day, not a whole lot. And today she only did 2.6 million. I'm a little surprised by that. I mean, maybe I thought it was gonna be a lot bigger because of the uh, uh, percentage gains and the trades. This company had over 200 trades today. So we did have about they're about six times her normal volume. Share structure, 
Well, the float isn't too bad. We got just about 33 million in the float. So that's probably helping the stock to move. Financials. Well, look at this. We got a biotech making money. Well, kind of. <laughs> they got revenues coming in. Most biotechs, biopharmacies are in R&D, research and development, which takes a lot of money because they haven't got anything to sell yet. They're still looking for that miracle drug. So they're selling a lot of shares and well, it's just not a money maker. They did pull in $195,000. We got three zeros up there. We got to put behind there, but look, cost them a quarter million dollars for that so they were in the hole fifty one thousand dollars not good quarterly all right a little better they made seventy five thousand dollars last february for that quarter cost them 73 i think they need a new cpa 73 from 75 equals two not one somebody cheated them so they got one thousand dollars and disclosures i don't think we saw anything else there but the late filing yep that is all we've got so let's jump on over to that news now, they've got lots of news here about different drugs that they're working with and where they're going, but I'm only going to focus in on the one that came out today, right here. Let's jump into this. So this did come out today. Q Biomed announces publication of preclinical research showing superior safety and efficacy against current first-line therapy of its drug candidate, Utricide B, for liver cancer. QB Myomed, a commercial stage biotechnology development company, announces a new publication supporting the potential superior safety and efficacy of its Ultraside B chemotherapeutic to treat liver cancer versus the current first line FDA approved drug. So they're saying their drug is better than the one that's already out there. Now, I'm not going to read all of this, folks. There's a lot of technical information, but I found the easy stuff. We previously reported the remarkable potency of Ultraside B against liver cancer cells. Recently, the U.S. FDA approved UTB as an orphan drug against HCC liver disease. The current study validates the superior efficacy of UTB over sorafenib the first line FDA approved treatment option against ACC liver cancer currently. And finally, the innovation has been granted a patent from the US, Canada, Japan, and South Korea, and has been conferred as an orphan drug status against HCC by the US FDA. So there you go, folks. They've got a drug that seemingly is working better than the number one drug that's out there right now already approved for HCC liver cancer. That's big news, not just for the company, but for the consumers. And I have seen positive results come in on cancer drugs, and the stock will run for days. I'm not saying this one is, but cancer is a big concern of everybody, and everybody loves a drug that works on cancer. Let's go take a look at that 200% gainer. Hot stock coming up. This is QBIO six month, four hour chart on Think or Swim. You need a free trading platform or just a backup? Go on over to TD Ameritrade. Sign up for a free trading account. You don't have to use them as your primary trader. Just keep your account open and you can use this anytime you like. So our high here on our six month chart is 66 cents. And we had a low just a couple days ago of three and a half cents. What a drop. As you can see, she has been under the 200 with a few attempts to get over it without any luck, including today. She did push hard to get up there, didn't even get close, but she looks eager to get it. She came out from underneath all the SMAs, pushed through the 50, is sitting on that 50 quite firmly right now, looking eagerly to get over that 200. I say that because the technicals are screaming. Every one of them is pointing up our RSI, MACD, ADX, and PPO. Everything looks like dynamite. Let's look at that 20-day, one-hour view. Gradually falling downhill, staying under the 50. Couldn't get above it. Hit that low bubble. Didn't make a whole lot of difference for two days. And then today, she took off. Of course she did. That was excellent news. Strong surge. Looks like she ended the day on a high. And look at our technicals. They're still flying. The kite does not want to come down just because the sun set. Let's look at that five-day, five-minute. All right, flat, flat, flat. Let's just look at today. So that news must have come out late because this didn't start her rise until, what is that, 1020. 1020, she started to move. She moved very quickly from, uh, what do we got there? Let's call it four cents up to uh, 10 cents. So that was a 250% jump 
right there in 15 minutes from when it first started. Then she fell back hard. She didn't quite make it to the 20. That's a good sign. She's hanging on to the 10. That's beautiful. She's still hanging on to the 10, looking great. She hit a high bubble here at the end of the day, and we see a pullback. That's normal. You hit a high bubble, people think, oh, there's the ceiling. we got to come down. But then when they realize it's a soft ceiling, it starts to go again. So let's take a look at that and break that last bar down to five bars. Wow. Right at the end of the day, she hit a high. Now, the technicals aren't screaming like they were on the hourly or the four hourly. They aren't cold by any means, but they aren't screaming. But everything still looks good. You got a trend here. This has come down on the minute, bouncing off of the 50. And she looks like she might come down and hit that 50 again. On the five day, five minute, Wow. As I said, she's floating on the 10 and sitting on the 10. Now, if she comes below the 10, right here, she pretty much got close to it. That's what we're looking for. She comes underneath the 10, she's going to fall, and you want to make sure she doesn't go below here. So I keep my eye on this simply because it is a cancer drug. It has been given orphan drug designation, which means if you want to use it, you can use it. It can be out there before it goes through all of its trials. You can start using it right now. And let me tell you, anybody that has liver cancer is going to be quite happy about that. So this could give us a few more days. Keep your eye on QBio. <laughs> we are looking at the walking dead this is ticker egoc energy one core they had a news press come out today and it's about bloody time they haven't had any news for nine years and they've had one filing in the last 10 years i'm telling you this company has been deathly quiet for a decade virtually well today's news press was well just in itself was exciting you know it's alive it speaks but no they were talking about an acquisition and that definitely got some excitement around this company she finished the day at 0055 with 150 percent gains she's on the pink tier she's current and she's got those precious green ticks i'm always telling you to look for looks good they are a self-proclaimed shell company that means they have no business right now there's no company there it's just a hollow ticker waiting for something an acquisition a merger and that's what today's news was all about so what was the relative volume around the company today well she normally does a million shares a day which is pretty surprising since she's been quiet for a decade today she did almost 40 million shares so you're looking at 39 40 times her normal volume Share structure, oh, unrestricted shares is where I get my float, 1.1 billion, not real good. And in case you're in doubt, they got the same number on the float down there too. It's huge. Financials, well, they're a shell company, so we're not going to see anything there. And just so you can see their disclosures, as I was telling you, they had one in 2020 and the rest are all over a decade old. So all we really have is the news. Now, the last piece of news they had was in 2013, and then we had a piece of news today. Even reading this headline, though, is a bit confusing. <laughs> you can read it if you want, see if you get anything from it. He's very long-winded. He likes to use big words, and I get the feeling that he doesn't speak English as his primary language, so it does make it a little difficult to understand. But I've tried to pick out the parts that tell us what they're going to be doing for their business. That's what I really want to know. What do you guys do? Well, he does tell us and tell us and tell us. <laughs> You'll see what I mean here. Energy One Core announced that it will be acquiring PB International Enterprise Limited, also known as The Group. The group, through this acquisition, is expected to assist EGOC and accelerate its establishment as a global strategic center in the Asia-Pacific region. Now, from what I can gather, he wants to source lots of various products to serve lots of various sectors. That's what he is talking about, and you'll get my drift even more when he tells us what his plans are. EGOC is planning to deploy involved in the field of modern health industry by owning a mature operation system. In the future, through developing its own technology and independent, high, sophisticated, cutting-edge products and instruments, EGOC expects to provide its users a leading health management service. So they're going to get into the health industry. Sounds good to me. EGOC will comprehensively deploy modern new agriculture 
build modern agriculture in the black boar industry chain, covering research and development, production and sales, and gradually form a new pattern of modern agriculture. So, health and agriculture, we're not done. <laughs> in the business segment in the future, they would like to get into community fresh food stores, community deli shops, and theme restaurants that they expect to form and create. Wow, this is a very big net he's casting out. We're not done. <laughs> he also wants to get into smart e-commerce, which will help EGOC build a platform for domestic flat combination industry diversification development. Whew. There's more. Future development of our four major sector main businesses, which consist of e-commerce shopping guide, self-operated mall, intracity business district and knowledge payment. In the future, there will be more involvements in high tech fields such as artificial intelligence and the metaverse. Have they really skipped anything? Couldn't he say we could do anything and everything? We're just not quite sure, but anything is possible. It would have been shorter. In a nutshell though, this is what they say they're doing. EGOC is anticipated to build a three dimensional industrial system with advanced technology combined with new business models of new agriculture, big health, and smart e-commerce. Again, it's still a very big net. They want to do a lot of different things, and we're not quite sure exactly what he's going to do first or if he's going to do any of them. But it got everybody excited, and it got this company out of the grave. So let's go take a look at that chart and see where it's going. But of course, we're looking at a six month, four hour chart for ECOG. She has a high back here of 2.3 cents, a low here of 0005. And right now we're over a thousand percent above the low bubble at 0055. She has been predominantly under the 200 all this time, had two attempts to get over it. This one was very short lived. And then you have today's. Today we have a lot of extra volume, all because of a news press that we've been waiting for for nine years. Technicals are all still strong, except for the RSI, which has pulled back because of the price. Let's take a look at that 20 day, one hour view. Steadily falling under the 200, under the 50, under everything now, hitting a low bubble, bounced back and then just went right back to that low and then she jumped today and it looks like the very first hours when most of her gains were taken all of the technicals are strong except the rsi again now that is to be expected you see how this went up very strong and then we have a drop up very strong and then a drop this line here folks is this right there if you were to take all these candlesticks and make this a line chart instead of a bar chart this would look like that. That is the same exact line. So when the price falls, this falls. But all the other technicals are strong right now. Five day, five minute. All right, she did move very quickly. As soon as that bell rang, first five minutes, she went up 150% from two cents to five cents. And in 20 minutes, went up over 350% gains, folks. She ended the day at 150. Right here, 20 minutes into the day, she was up 350%. She did fall back. I would have thought she was gonna continue falling, but watching the chart, you can see, she never even went under the 10. The 10 is as thin as a cracker. She could have broke that easily. Instead, she bounced and made a new high here, closing in on 400% gains. And then from that point, she did consolidate and then started to fall away. However, that's not as bad as it looks. If I draw a line from the bottom of where the surge started, and I draw a line at the top where the surge ended, normally the high bubble, and then find the center. Now you can do this mathematically or you can just eyeball it, I'm eyeballing it. And I'm not trying to line it up to anything, I'm just trying to find the center. And it looks like about right there. Whoa, look at that, look at that. That's what I'm talking about. So she went up, that's her 100%, and then she fell all the way down here to 50% loss, which means she kept 50%. And as long as the price stays right around this line, it can be just a wee bit under it, touching it, or just on top of it, I'm a happy camper. I'm confident that this has a stronger likelihood chance of going up from this point. If it comes down below here, and I don't mean just underneath, but I mean if it falls down here, I would then expect it to continue to fall. 
So this looks like it's ready to continue growing. Now the technicals on the five minute look pretty weak. I can't say that there's anything exciting here at all. One hour look good, four hour look good, five minute not so hot. However, there's a lot that still can happen with this company. This is its first press release in 10 years virtually. They're gonna have to have a filing when they do have this acquisition. They'll probably have a press release and maybe another press release between now and then. But when is that? We have no idea, folks. It's just that it made a huge giant jump of 400% roughly, so fast, out of the grave. I thought you might want to look at this stock because who knows what it's going to do. It shows like it still has life in it. <laughs> Now here's a stock that's real curious to me. I kind of think of the Emperor's New Clothes when I think of this stock. Remember the Emperor's New Clothes? They were supposedly invisible, but he was really walking around naked. Well, that's the way this stock is. It's kind of naked. I seen big news on it this morning. Almost skipped it though because of the headline. It said Superbox Inc. announces merger. That's it, there was nothing else to it. And I almost went by it, but hey, we all love merger news. So I jumped into the stock to see what I could learn. Not much, naked, there was not a whole lot to look at, but it is very curious, so I'm gonna share this with you because there could be a potential explosion here, right? It is a merger and the news shows a legitimate company. So here's what I found. S-Box, Superbox Inc. finished the day at 30 cents with 7% gains on merger news. She's on the pink tier, she's current, got both those green ticks I tell you to look for, and she is a shell risk, now that's a bad thing. That means that she's in business, but she's not making any money. Well, I couldn't find any information about her business. I didn't do a deep, deep dive, but just looking around, I couldn't see anything. Now, their description here says that they're involved with environmental technologies and green energy technologies. Now, maybe they were, but the news today, that's the kind of thing that's written in it. So maybe that's their new business. So what was the relative volume around this company's merger news today? What? You've got to be kidding me. Wow. Normally, she's only doing 3.3 thousand shares a day. Today, she did 17,000 shares. Look, this is either really under the radar or I really got this wrong. I'll let you be the judge at the end. What is the share structure here? Probably 10 billion, right? Oh, no, we got a super duper low float, 4.5 million, less than 5 million. So if anything does happen with this company and it does start to rise, that's going to help it rise pretty bloody quick, like a helium balloon. Financials, we're not going to see anything over here. Nope, because she's a shell risk. She's not reporting even quarterly. No, she's got nothing going. So hopefully the news today is the news she needs. Filings, nothing current over here. Everything is a couple years old. So all we really have is the news. And would you believe there's only one piece of news in forever. We don't have any other news. Superbox Inc. announces a merger. Couldn't you give us a little more in the heading? So when you look into this, it's not bad actually. Superbox Inc., a Nevada company, and Quantum Core Innovation, a Delaware company, announce merger. Superbox Inc. is to be merged with Quantum Core Innovation, an enterprising company with a bright future in green technologies. Quantum Core is focused on cutting edge transition technologies related to the decarbonization and the waste conversion process in the energy sector. This will create an industry leader in green technology. The combined company will operate under the name of Quantum Core Innovation. The headquarters for the combined company will be in New York. And that's all they say. There's nothing more there. However, at least we know what this company's doing. Quantum Core Innovation is going to work with green technologies, transitioning waste, and decarbonizing it. Whatever that's all about. But we do know that green technology is hot right now. This is a merger. The company isn't making any money. They need to make money. We don't know enough about Quantum Core, but this could be an opportunity waiting to happen with a 5 million float, right? So let's go see what that chart looks like. Surprise! <laughs> Would you believe that is the whole chart for S-Box? There is no more. I don't know if this is the first day for the ticker, if they were on the expert market, they changed their ticker, I don't know. I didn't do a deep dive into this company, but what I did look around at didn't show me anything else to see. 
So this is all we've got. High bubble of 34 cents today, and right now we're at 30 cents. You're looking at a stock that just made a merger with a green technology company that has less than $5 million in the float. That seems seriously under the radar. You think something might happen? You might want to put this on your watch list. Hey, if you've got an appetite, I've got some leftovers for you. You know, as I'm trading through the day, I accumulate a lot of stocks. And then when it comes time to make the video, I choose a few to show you. But rather than waste all the DD on the others, I'm going to give you the catalyst and the tickers right now. And I'll let you do what you want with them. So this one here, PHCG, Pure Harvest Corporation. This is a cannabis company. She finished the day at one cent with 1,560% gains. And would you believe me if I told you she did more than triple that today? She did. She was almost up to 5,000% gains. Now, it would have been a very difficult one to grab. This came onto the open market from the expert market. When a stock has problems with their filings, they get pulled off the open market and thrown down there. When the filings get fixed, they come back on the market. Well, this got pulled off on the 21st and just came back that quick. I haven't seen that happen before. And when stocks go to the expert market, the prices get obliterated. This may have been about a penny when it went over there. And when it came back onto the market, it was in the triple zeros. It fell down to triple zero two, then went to triple zero six, and then it came back on the market somewhere around there. And it didn't just go to a penny. It went to almost four cents today, 5,000% gains. Now, this happens very often with expert market stocks. I was looking at one. I made a video about this. It's called 89,000%. I show you the before and after clips. I found a stock that was on the expert market, looked like it was ready to come out of it because all their filings were caught up. So I told everybody and I said, look, the average price is up here. So when this comes back on from down here, it's going to jump about 17,000%. Now, what kind of idiot tells somebody a stock's going to jump 17,000%? Would you believe it went 89,000% the next day? Like I said, there's a video out there. It's called 89,000. You just scroll down. You'll find it the before and after. So there is one site I know of that you got to pay for. It's $40 a month. I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm just giving you a heads up. It's called RE Filings. RE Filings will let you know when a company is coming from the expert onto the open market before it happens. That could be worth the investment. The next stock that I noticed today was Ayala Pharmaceuticals. They had a form come out today that they were withdrawing their registration statement, Form S1, for their public offering. They were going to put out 14 million shares. That's going to dilute the shares. It makes them worth less. Just telling everybody that they were going to do that got the price to jump. It ended the day at 94%. I do believe it was higher than that. People get excited for all the right reasons. And the last one I got here is IGEX, Indo Global Exchange. Now this is a Karen Courier play. You may be familiar with Karen Courier. She goes out and saves companies on the expert market. Some companies get thrown down there because they're late filing. You know why they were late filing? The management ab scanned they're gone. There's nobody there. The boat's just floating in the water. So she goes to court and she gets custody from the court and she gets control of these companies. She doesn't own them, but it's her job to clean them up. It's her job to get them pink on the market. And then when she makes a deal and gets somebody into that ticker, she gets a big commission for it. So that's why we like Karen Courier. She does this a lot. Well, they did not have news today, but they did have a tweet. Now, they had one tweet that came out in May. This is our last tweet or PR until the merger's 8K. I guess people were bugging them about a merger they had spoke of. Well, a tweet came out today. It has been long. It has been hard. It has been complicated. I wish that said completed. However, we are proud to announce that finally, IGEX is in good order, clean, structured, and ready to successfully accomplish its plans and objectives. More important updates and news to come very, very, very soon. Well, I didn't see an 8K anywhere. The deal isn't done yet. So I guess they were being bothered. But that's what we got is a tweet. And that's why the company ran today because they got hope. Hope tastes so good. And they were up 94%.
Well, as always, folks, I enjoy sharing this information with you. I hope you found something interesting between the scrolling news, the stocks I shared with you, the leftovers. There's lots of stocks out there bouncing for different reasons, and sometimes they bounce for reasons we should have been paying attention to but weren't. I hope I shared a couple of those today. DD, folks, it is where all the goodies are found. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.